Hey guys, it's MJ, the student actuary, and we're going to be looking at the discounted payback period in just a little bit more detail. So I thought, um, let's start it off with a quick example. So, let's say you are the president of Egypt, and you want to make um, some more money, so you decide to do a project. And your project is that you're going to build a really big pyramid and in return you hope you're going to get even more tourism. So you build this beautiful pyramid for $20 million. And you expect um, every year to get a further $2 million um, from the tourist. So the question that the government um, asks is how long will it take um, until this project is making money you know once how, how long will it take for us to clear this 20 million uh, the discounted payback period so how do we do it well you might have noticed that this is one of the um, you know capital project appraisal um, type of questions and one thing to remember when doing the mathematics behind all of these things is to know that the net present value, the internal rate of return, and the discounted payback period, they're kind of all exactly the same thing. They're kind of like three little triplets. Okay, I made those little, those are supposed to be babies. Um, it's my little artistic view. They look kind of creepy though. But anyway, um, discounted payback period, internal rate of return, net present value. They're all from the same family and they're all kind of the same thing just each one wants something different so if this analogy is making no sense at all let's look at it um, in a more technical way so you have your net present value is equal to the sum of the discounted cash flows and the important word to recognize here is discounted um, this is where actuarial science comes into play because because it's being discounted you need an interest rate and there's going to be time um, you could make this even more complicated by assigning probabilities to your cash flows but we don't have to worry about that just yet um, so yeah discounted and whenever you hear discounted you must be thinking of this symbol if you have never seen the symbol before then, then that's a bit of a problem. But most of you should be very familiar with this formula um, or the symbol. The V is 1 uh, divided by 1 plus I, with I being the interest rate, and N being um, the time value. So this VN uh, is our discount factor, and this is what makes things interesting. Uh, excuse the pun over there. Because let's say we didn't have the discounted um, feature in. And remember, we're looking for the discounted payback period. So let's just look at the payback period. Okay. Um, here, we're going to see that the payback period is 10 years. I mean, it was 20 million to build the pyramid. It was 2 million um, every year. You could do this calculation in your head. You know, you had the initial expense of the 10 million up front. Uh, sorry, the 20 million um, up front, and then every year you were making your 10, um, sorry, your 2 million. Um, I was supposed to make the green bar at the end there come in, but I forgot to do that with my animations. Anyway, the picture still makes sense. So what happens is you have your 20 million uh, negative cash flow, and then you have your 2 million positive cash flows happening across time. So we can see that after 10 years time, we would have received um, 2 million times 10 equals 20 million. You can see I've added up all, all the green uh, blocks and they equal the red blocks. So the payback period would be 10 years. But the discount, um, the good old discount function or discount factor comes in and we know that it's going to deflate future values if the interest rate is positive. So Instead, we're going to be looking at something like this. And 10 payments, because the, the values from each year are going to be worth less and less from a, a time value, we're going to see that the discounted payback period is actually going to be greater 
then 10 years. And I'm going to say just a quick reminder, because if you were given a choice between having $2 million today or $2 million next year, the majority of people or everyone would take $2 million now. Um, interest comes into play when what is the amount in the future in one year's time where you don't mind receiving, so it could be getting 2.2 million in one year's time or 2 million now. That means an interest rate of 10%. And that's why as time goes on, these future 2 millions are worth less and less because the interest erodes it and stuff like that. So that's kind of the, the philosophy behind the discounted payback period. Um, I mean, your steps that you want to do is they, they kind of, it's kind of straightforward. I mean, first of all, you want to draw a timeline with your cash flows. You then want to set up your equation of value at time zero, set your net present value equal to zero, and then solve for N because N will be the, the unknown time. And remember, you, you should be given the internal rate of return or not necessarily internal rate of return, but some sort of interest rate to work with. And, and that's kind of it. And I know that this looks very simple. You've got just these four points, but this is what you need in order to solve these questions. But you're probably going to go back and do your homework now, and you're going to be seeing, I mean, crazy actuarial formulas, and the question will be like, oh, um, this oil company sets up an oil well. Um, it costs $10 million to set up. It's going to have 100000 every month um, maintenance fee. Um, there's only a 10% chance that they will start earning profit in five years' time, in which case it will increase by a compound interest of 10%, and internal rate of return or interest is going to have a varying model, and they're going to say, what is the discounted payback period? And you're going to be like, what? But, and I agree the questions like that are difficult, and that's why I didn't want to go into just an example on this video. I want you guys to to take the simple questions, the simple uh, or the very basic discount payback period, understand it, understand why you're calculating this N, understand, get familiar with the formulas and these weird actuarial symbols. Um, if you're not getting it, go back to mathematics, do maybe a little brush up course, come back to it. Um, I mean, don't, don't try and rush it. You need to understand because at the end of the day, and you're going to see this with your entire actuarial um, career, is you're going to have to wrestle with problems. You're going to have to wrestle with the concepts, wrestle with um, some questions. And it's really good to get into that habit right in the beginning in subject CT1. Um, wrestle with these fundamental issues, um, and then yeah, you'll do exam questions, wrestle with that, and that'll just make you more comfortable so that when you actually do write the exam or when you're working in real life, um, you will have built up your muscles, your intellectual muscles, and you'll be able to pin down any enemy that comes across your way. So yeah, that is the discount payback period. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this answers um, some more of your questions. Um, so yeah, this was just a philosophical overview of what it is, and I really do encourage all of you guys to go and wrestle with each question uh, by yourself. It doesn't matter if it takes you an entire hour. These things do take time. Um, give it your best, concentrate, and fight. Because, yeah, that's what you must do in order to pass CT1. But, yeah, guys, thanks so much for watching. And I will be uploading a video soon on what is an actuary. I know it's kind of like, um, it's like, oh, that's an obvious one. But if you actually come to think of it, what is an actuary, it's very difficult to explain. So I will be making a video on that. So stay tuned, subscribe, like, do all that type of stuff. Thanks guys for watching. Cheers.